With God, there is always more. More love, more life, more freedom. Welcome to Zoe's Exploring More with Michael Thompson. C.S. Lewis once wrote, Our Heavenly Father has provided many delightful ends for us along our journey, but He takes great care to see that we do not mistake any of them for home. Join me and the team as we explore the kingdom together, discovering the deep truths and offering encouragement for the journey. There is always more. Hey listeners, it's SJ. And like many of you, as 2019 draws to a close, we are preparing for the holidays, celebrating what God has done in the past year. We're praying for guidance and casting vision for 2020. We're having meetings and strategic gatherings to prepare our hearts and our team for what God has planned for us in the next year. During those meetings, a team member brought up that many times people find a podcast, like Exploring More, that they enjoy, but then they don't go back and listen to previous episodes, uh, missing out on some of the great content. So with that in mind, for the next few weeks, we're going to be revisiting our very first series called Being Fathered. We hope you enjoy it, and we'll be back in the studio recording all new episodes of the Exploring More podcast soon. Thank you. We are in a series of talking about being fathered. In this upcoming Father's Day, we thought it'd be a good idea to talk about that. What does it look like to be fathered? What does it look like how to father? And so we're in a five-part series of being fathered, and this is number three. I'm with my friends, Tom Benner and Scott Stankavage and S.J. Jennings, and we are, we're exploring this um, together and sharing some stories and some of the good things that God's up to in our lives. In the previous couple episodes, we talked about God's provision, and in the second session, we talked about God's protection and just how critical that is for a father, a father's role in sons' and daughters' lives is provision and protection, often to the degree that the children don't even realize mm-hmm. what's going on. You know, they don't know the full extent of what a father is up to and even why. And uh, sometimes it's years later, we were talking about how we saw our fathers providing and protecting us and how God has been fathering us. So we're just going to continue in, in that conversation. And I thought I would just jump the first question to you men. So if God is fathering us, we're being fathered by God. Well, what's an example of your, in your life in the last day or two, the last week? How's he been fathering you? Yeah, like so many of us, I hope so many of us uh, have experienced in the past have, and still now struggle with the discipline of physical fitness. I'll get on that wagon and get off and get back on and get back off again. And uh, it's been a little bit of a challenge for me and I'm, I'm back on it now and really enjoying it. But he's fathering me in that, in these constant whispers of, you've got what it takes, Mm. you've got the ability, you've got the know-how, you know this is good for you, I'm here with you, I know it's hard to roll out of bed at 4.30 in the morning or whatever it is, you know, Mm -hmm. that you have to do to fit that into your schedule, but uh, it's worth it. And so go forth and be well, you know, and uh, so... One of the things, a uh, little thing I decided to do is my last three reps of any set I do, I dedicate, you know, to the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. It's just a little thing I do. Yeah, that's good. That's been cool. Yeah, it does seem like in the disciplines of our lives as men, we, we need fathering. You know, there's things uh, I've I've put off, things I've walked away from, things I've, you know, honestly, uh, TV's easier. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or, or the phone. Or, 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 or yeah, work, you yeah. know, banging out emails work. and stuff. But yeah, that's a place that I think God is wanting to father us as men in, in the disciplines of our lives, eating, sleeping, getting rest. I mm-hmm. mean, just, just the kind of things that the body needs to be kept up. That's good, SJ. Really mm-hmm. good. I used to do reps, lifting weights. Of course, I was a football player and, and I used to name my children. Mm. until I had seven. You can't do seven extra reps. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, though. I might get a Holy Spirit. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah. Only you three. can always get three. Yeah, you, you can, can do always three get three more. more. That's right. Come yeah. on. Seven, Sarah, Shelby, Sean, <laughs> Madison, Leo, Ella, jo- That's too many. So yeah. <laughs> Help me get the weight off. I'm yeah. done. It's on my chest. Yeah. yeah. I, get, I, I get fathered recently here in the last six months or so with issues that are on my heart. 
And when I remember to take them to the Father, He always answers me in such beautiful ways on the radio. You know, I listen to the Truth Network and the Bible teachers, what they're talking about will mm-hmm. answer my question. You know, SJ sends me emails and the, the Zoe, you yeah. know, uh, daily orientation daily stuff. orientations. Yep. And the answer is just, they're right there. If I submit myself to being Father and ask for them, Father, I mm-hmm. need you on this. Father, I, I'm trying to answer this and do this on my own. And that's not usually going well. Mm-hmm. Lord, go ahead, father me. And yeah. boy, when I get in that posture, I call it the Bose effect. It answers that the same answer starts coming from the radio, from you, Michael, you know, in, in conversation, mm-hmm. from my wife, from my brother. And it's all the same answer. And it's just really wonderful. I kind of smile and look up and mm-hmm. say, yeah, when, yeah. You, when you come to me, I, I can help you out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the, I, I love the idea that we're going to take him up on the offer. So even you're looking, you're paying attention. You're, you're, you're counting on him fathering you, and you're looking for where that is coming from and how that's coming. I mean, that for our listeners, that's got to be really kind of ground zero. The first step in being fathered by God is, is, is asking, inviting, giving him permission, you know, sharing. I, I don't know how to do this. I don't know what this looks like. Would you father me here? Well, and, and mm-hmm. the, you know, so as a think back to yourself as a, you know, a 14 or 15 or 18 year old, you rebelled against fathering. You didn't really want to be fathered. That's right. right. And so I don't think it's an instinctive, you know, narrative to, yeah, I want dad, dad, father me when I spilled such and such, or I mm-hmm. mouth off to my, to your mom, you know, go ahead and father me, dad. Cause fathering usually meant discipline or bringing in line. But as we get older and as we understand what fathering is, and I think Having children <laughs> yeah. really it helps yeah, get expand the, get your the definition gist of, of it, fathering, right. and then you begin to ask, I want to be fathered. And then you look at your father and you evaluate him, yeah. the good and the bad, and then you, fathering just gets a whole lot more serious. Mm-hmm. Being fathered and fathering right. takes on a whole new dimension when you get past 18 or you have your own right. family. Right, right. That's good. The mileage helps, doesn't it? Yes. You, you need to get through those years, adolescence, when you don't want to be fathered to this place. Because the enemy wants you to believe you're on your own. In those years from 14 to 18, you tried to prove that you could do it on your own. So there is a bit of a, of a natural grade Transition. that's moving that way. And then and then you're, you're confessing or acknowledging. But then you come to this place where you... You say, I, I, I don't want to be alone. I, I don't want to be on my own. I want help. Oh, that, that seems to move the heart of God when our hearts move that, that direction. That's good, Scott. Well, I was going to say along the lines of what you both just shared, a big part of our concept of God fathering us does relate to training, teaching you how to do things, helping you see differently. And recently, you know, I, I'm a, a business owner we, we are, I'm a stonemasonry contractor, and I have two of my youngest sons in business with me. And one of them, the older of the two, he and I, you know, we're sort of similar personality, strong-willed. And so we sometimes butt heads over <laughs> issues or approaches. And just last week, we had one of those headbutting sessions, kind of. And, and I was driving home. and I mean, this went on for probably three, four, five hours, you know, and I, and I was just, my mind was just offended and, and sort of all this attack kind of thoughts, you know. And, and all of a sudden, I just hear this voice say to the commentary and the narrative that I was telling myself, Yeah, he said, is that so? And it was like, it was just this, this awakening to well, you know what? It's really not. <laughs> I mean, what I'm saying, the things, I would never say that to right. him or to anyone else, but yet this offended, what we call a false self part of us, was just yakking it up. And and then I realized that God was teaching me not only by him saying that to me and causing me to evaluate the voice in my head, but I think he was telling me, hey, this is a tool you can use. Ask that question mm-hmm. a lot. Mm-hmm. Ask that question when what's going on and what's coming out of you or at least up inside of you is very unchristlike, very not who you want to be. Mm-hmm. And to have the, the smelling salts of that kind of awakening before mm-hmm. 
you go out and do something you're going to regret. Yeah, or like, go much like, further. Like yeah. saying, you know, talking behind somebody's back or mm-hmm. or even to their face and just creating a, a big rift that never in my heart do what I ever want to create with my son, you know. And so it was, I felt like he saved me from going on for days, you know. I mean, who, mm-hmm. who knows how long that stuff can take before it winds down. It's yeah. a normalcy and sanity, you know, because so what's, really. what's the question that state the question again that invaded in, in your thoughts? Is and in, so? Is that so? <laughs> is that so? Yeah. yeah. What, is what you're saying true? Yeah. Is what your mind is saying right now? These mm-hmm. thoughts, are they true? Doesn't that sound like something a good father, <laughs> a good father. Would, would say when you're, where you're going off? Like and Gandalf yeah, would say that. Sit back, cross his leg, puff yeah. on his pipe a little bit, you know. <laughs> is that so? Is that so? <laughs> Really? It's true. Oh, it ought yeah, it's not so to good, be. Tom. Yeah. It ought not to be. Yeah. <laughs> it ought not to be. Yeah. You know, but I there's so one. much in that, so much training in that, so much. Yeah. It can happen sooner. Yeah. You know, you said three or four days, yes. and that went to three or four hours. What a great leap mm-hmm. to be and what, fathered. And part of what we've been talking about in our groups and in our coffee time and stuff is a lot of the training that God will do is show us the stuff that we can't see ourselves. Yeah. We have blind spots. We have attitudes. We have just things that that seem so normal and so right and so justifiable. And, and he'll just have this way of showing it to me. And that's why we call it kind of sometimes our little training circle or our dojo. This is what I'm in right now. And so a lot of the training and disciplining is, is very kind and, and inviting, but it's it's not always what you would ask for or sign up yeah. for, you know, if you sure. had a choice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You had. You were going to say something? Did you have a thought? I, I had one where it was with some of my children, and, and I wrote a scathing email that was was absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> and I sent it to Michael, and, and he immediately called me and said, hey, you didn't send that, did you? <laughs> Thank God. And then I sent it to the Lord, and I said, Lord, I feel so righteous about this, and, and I was hurt, and so on and so forth, and but I'm not going to send it, you know, because at 56, I've learned somewhere along the line, let's let this, let this slow, marinate. Yeah, slow cooks, marinate, that's good. You know, and that was 10 days ago. Thank God I didn't send it. I don't feel that way. I understand what I was feeling, but it was would not have been appropriate. It would not have been fair, you know, to them, mm-hmm. to our relationship, and it would have created a riff, you know, that would have set us back months, years. Mm-hmm. And but that's how, you know, that's how strongly I felt about it. But that's how close I was to the edge of the mistake mm-hmm. that I needed Michael to help father me, you know, and then the Lord, you know, is that so? I'm glad I got out of that. But we skate so close to the edge. You know, whenever mm-hmm. our emotions get that powerful, especially with our children and fathering, boy, you really got to mm-hmm. raise the questions and mm-hmm. get the curiosity up because, you yeah. know, there's probably more easily to make a mistake than there is to handle it well. Right. Oh, yeah. Well, right. right. Absolutely. Well, I got to. I got to tell you, you know, when you ask questions so that you can actually give the answer. So yeah. this is one of those questions <laughs> that I was excited about answering because God, you know, sometimes it's discipline, sometimes it's training, and sometimes it's just sheer gifts. Yeah. It's a present. So just in the, just in the last 24 hours, I was, I was sitting down with a sandwich, okay, uh, at home, went home to eat, put a sandwich together, and just, I was the only one home with the dogs, and so I clicked on the TV looked through the channels and Braveheart was on. I mean, here my friends are smiling. I mean, that movie means, that film, that story means a ton to me. And so I'm really curious at this point what I'm going to hit and what's going to come on. And it is the scene after Robert the Bruce's betrayal where he comes back up the stairs to his father. Oh, yeah. And I'm watching it. I don't want to lose heart. You know, his father talks about betrayal and they, they fight for Wallace. You know, they're inspired. Men do that for me because I steal their lands, push them out, starve their families. They're, but he inspires them. And, and his dad's, you know, this father figure is, a, is not, not really good and has some bad advice. And yet something in the Bruce's heart, he ends that scene with, I'll never be on the wrong side again. Mm-hmm. And I'm watching that. I push pause. I mean, I'm feeling the scene. And, and I realize... We're in this podcast series on fathering. You know, the cover of the book and several places in the Heart of a Warrior have references to Braveheart. It just felt like a smooch, a kiss, Mm -hmm. a hug from God, and and a a little little card, you know, 
not, not a big giant present, but it was big for my heart, like opening a card and, and reading this. I see you. I love what you're, what you're doing. I'm in this. Go get them. It just was, it was, it was special. And, and as I reflect on that film, it really is a story about fathers and sons. There's Wallace and his father who was killed, Longshanks and his son, who that relationship's awful. And then there's the other men who have fathers, Amish and his father. You know, there's a father-son dynamic in that whole storyline and, yeah. and being father, good fathers and bad fathers. It's a precious, precious story. And God raises that, you know, this, this in these last, last day, in the last 24 hours. Yeah, was, what, one of my favorite characters from that film is Argyle. Uncle Argyle, oh, who steps in to surrogate. Wall- Wallace's yeah, uncle. Um, mm-hmm. dad we'll shoes. have to remedy that, I guess. Yeah, yeah, that's right. good one. Yeah, yeah. that's beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. Can I t- Mike, can I, uh, yeah, sure react, respond. What? Yeah, yeah. A quick one. I went, this happened just before I came here. I went to a job that we had done this bathroom interior, stone walls. I got called in to come look at it because one of our crews is there and one of our guys was managing it, but they wanted it a little more detailed. So I pull into the street this uh, job is on, and I said, oh, my goodness. My GPS says it's 250 feet down on the left. I said, we did this job. We did this stone job when I used to lay stone. Pull up, and it's this incredible experience of going back to 1984. I asked him, do you remember when this house was built? I didn't remember the date. It was over 30 years ago. I was laying stone with one helper, and I was just... I was in awe. I mean, mm. it was good work. It was beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. But it was just a little, kind of a little affirming Yeah, let moment. me show you something. Oh, mm-hmm. I forgot about that job long, long, long ago. And that's so beautiful. Right there so this is Hill. another homeowner. This is a, a, new, yeah, a they, new homeowner they, in, the, in a home that yeah, you worked the on before. Home. Oh, my and goodness. They were doing they this didn't remodel. know it was your work. No. It was a secret little And, and I told them, and I, I mean, I gave them the history of the stone, where it came from, and a little bunch of details. They loved it. How great. And yeah, God that just was such, I felt like. That's a gift. What, is the odds what a of precious that? gift. Yeah. What a precious gift that is. Yeah, Good. It's, it's almost like the present you had an opportunity to affirm the, yeah. the younger you, mm-hmm. you know? Much mm-hmm. younger. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I hate to cut in on this now, but let's, let's take a quick break and we'll be right back and continue uh, our stories. Hey listeners, this is SJ. Just wanted to tell you real quick about a cool resource we have available for you. It's a digital audio pass from both the Deepening Weekend for Women that we did back in September and the Heart of a Warrior Encounter for Men that was out in Colorado in September. We create these resources because we know not everyone can make it to the weekend, but may want to hear the guiding and the teaching that took place there. And also folks want to revisit what they heard at the weekend. If you were even there, you may want to re-listen to some of the sessions that were taught. So, if you visit zoe.org forward slash store, you can find the digital audio passes there, both for the Deepening Weekend for Women and the Heart of a Warrior Encounter West. And they're very reasonably priced. And Serena, our engineer for the podcast, has done a great job of editing those down. Each individual session is about the length of the average commute, so it's a great way to kind of soak in this message even while you're commuting during the day, or to take it away for a weekend and listen to it at your leisure. Either way, I'd encourage you to go and check out this important resource, the Digital Audio Pass, for the Deepening Weekend for Women and the Heart of Warrior Encounter West. We hope you'll check it out at zoe.org forward slash store. Welcome back, and uh, let's jump right back into it. I know I've written a blog about it and shared it from the stage at Heart of a Warrior Weekends, and I went trout fishing at the local stream up in Philadelphia, outside of Philadelphia where I'm from, where I used to go with my father. And my father was in the battle with brain cancer, and he would die maybe two months later. Uh, he couldn't go fishing with me, but I went to the same holes that we always went to. And Dad didn't eat fish, but he liked when my mom liked when I'd bring trout home, and I'd you know, skin mm-hmm. them and, and we'd eat and the house would smell like onions and butter and, and trout. And, mm. and it was just such a glorious celebration. But this particular day, I went in the morning and, you know, for an hour or two and I didn't catch anything all day and it's time to go home. And in fact, we might have been going to church with, with my mom and dad at you know, nine o'clock. So I went early 
So I'm walking out and I don't have any. And I said, Lord, just one last cast, just one into this hole. That wasn't even a very attractive hole. If I were a trout, I wouldn't have been there. <laughs> but I put it into this hole and, you know, you know what happened. Mm. And up comes this trout, hits my lure and, and I've got it. And, and I'm, oh, let me get him on the land, get him on the land. He's flopping all over. And, and you know, I hug him and I kiss him. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I have tears streaming down my face. I march into the house. You know, mom says proverbial, did you get any? You know, yeah, I got one. And I was just so happy. We cooked it up. It was it was almost like communion. It was just glorious. Wow. But it, which is just a wonderful story that brings tears to my eyes. But that night, some people came and visited my parents, friends of the family. In fact, they were one was a deacon at a local church. And I told the story that, yeah, I, on my last cast, I caught one just to celebrate, you know, dad. And the woman looked at me and said, God doesn't care about you catching trout. Your dad's mm. here dying, and, you know, we're here, you know, trying to support him, and, and you, you think catching a trout is, you know, has anything to do with it. I was so—I didn't say anything. I, I was so offended. I, I was so surprised. And, you know, I've never really ever—I sh- never would share that with them, but I was—that's not true. That's mm-hmm. a lie. You know, that— that stonework that day, yesterday, for this podcast, that's what that was that it was for. You know, that heart of a warrior was for this. Mm-hmm. That trout, you know, 15 yeah. years ago was to celebrate my dad with my mom. No mm-hmm. question, no question about it. A mm-hmm. good father does that. Mm-hmm. You know, if he would send his son to die for you, what what what, what yeah, else, else would he, he give well, you? Yeah, wouldn't he give you? That's right. You want your yeah. computer, a car, mm-hmm. a trout, a fish, a stone? Mm-hmm. He gave you his son. Mm-hmm. He'll give you everything else. Mm-hmm. Good, good father. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I love that. Yeah, let me let me read kind of in the spirit of what we're talking about. This will be really, I think, appropriate. I'm going to read something from Hebrews 12, and then uh, and this is from the Message version. And just you guys, just respond. What what comes up in your heart in this idea of being fathered, and, and what it looks like? Hebrews 12, 4 through 12, and the Message says, "Or have you forgotten how good parents treat children?" And that God regards you as his children. My dear child, don't shrug off God's discipline, but don't be crushed by it either. It's the child he loves that he disciplines. The child he embraces, he also corrects. God is educating you. That's why you must never drop out. He's treating you as dear children. This trouble you're in isn't punishment. It's training the normal experience of children. Only irresponsible parents leave children to fend for themselves. Would you prefer an irresponsible God? We respect our own parents for training and not spoiling us. So why not embrace God's training so we can truly live? While we were children, our parents did what seemed best to them. But God is doing what is best for us, training us to live God's holy best. At the time, discipline isn't much fun. It always feels like it's going against the grain. Later, of course, it pays off handsomely, for it's the well-trained who find themselves mature in their relationship with God. That's really good. Where does that take you in the explanation of this good, good father, gifts, training? What I mean, it's affirming. So yeah. much of this, but anything in there that stands out, any piece of that that you just like, oh, I needed to hear that, or that's really good, reminds me of something. You know, man, I have kids, children, they're not kids, 29, 26, 22, 8, 8, and 7. And so I can see the different facets of discipline, of training, and, uh, you know, the older ones, what actually they learned, what they were well-trained to, what they weren't. Uh, and then the importance of training my littles, you know, the eight, eight, and seven, and what's important. And I try to, I try to let everyone know the gift, the training, the purpose of the discipline. I, I need to teach you. It's my job. God gave me this job to teach you, my youngest son, how to listen to your mother, at least by the second time she asks you to do something, or how to clean your plate. Because that's what we do as part of our family. And you could, you know, take any number of training issues. But um, I try to explain that so they know. And they may not know now at eight. But as I look at Sarah Shelby and Sean, my older kids, they know. 
And the one training that I didn't get because I refused it was how to change the oil of a car. Esti, I know you're a car guy. Um, Dad didn't teach me that. He did teach me how to trout fish. Mm -hmm. You know, he taught me how to hit a baseball and he taught me how to shoot a basketball. And that training was so important. I treasure that, especially now that he's not here. Mm. I see the guys changing oil <laughs> and, and my mm -hmm. sons don't know how mm -hmm. and I don't either, <laughs> but they'll know how to trout fish. And, and, but, you know, whatever your father taught you, you know, either by strict instruction or by just modeling it is so, is so important and so deep and so permanent, mm -hmm. you know, a permanent marker mm -hmm. on your heart, uh, especially if you have a good father, you know, your earthly father. But mm -hmm. then, you yeah. know, I'll stop there with comparing it to yeah, God. Yeah, I love the father. passage comparing the two. I, I love that about it, that here's, you know, if, if, if good parents parent this way, you know, stand back here, let, let's listen to how God parents. And there's discipline, there's training, there's, and in the context like you're talking about of love, it's in the context of love. You know, when you were talking about your son earlier, and you said something I want to come back to it and you, cause you want to tell him some of the things that he doesn't yet know. Right. And you're a dad, you're mm -hmm. a father. Well, this Hebrews tells us, well, let's, let's elevate, let's take that to God. What, what's God doing for you? You know? Yeah. And, and when he whispers mm -hmm. to you that phrase, he's, he's saying, do you, you think you know all of this? Right. Do you think you got all this down? <laughs> really? Mm -hmm. And so it's good for you to, to be able to, connect those pieces in, in that moment. And, um, yeah. And, and how, how being fathered, I think the first times this starts to happen can be a little confusing if, if you're not prepared, just like a lot of first times, you, you're not sure what's going on. You're not sure what God's up to in this. And, and there can be some hard things in life and there can be some other things that are really, really beautiful, but do we even have the skill or the, or the desire or the want to, to take them to God? and take him up on this fathering mm -hmm. idea. Do you remember the first time or the first times you started to even go down this, this path as a, as, as a possibility of God's provision and protection and fathering you? Well, yeah, when, when you think about it, we're talking about a pretty radical idea that God is personally involved with mm -hmm. teaching us, training us, helping us. And so it wasn't really on my radar much until we started in this message, this idea of intimacy with God and that it is available. You know, so much of my journey in my faith was more about trying to figure it out myself just by reading the scripture and not trying to understand it and trying to follow it and, and live by that. And one of the things that I, I remember stood out to me so much in the beginning of that was reading through Proverbs. And there's a lot of references, I mean, multiple references to the self-confident fool, oh, which yeah. I didn't want to be. And I knew there are in certain areas of my life where I was overconfident or I wasn't asking questions. I was just making declarations and giving lectures, whether it's in parenting or whatever. And I just think that this idea that we're offering and, and suggesting that folks that are listening to that would explore is God is so much more present and vocal and desiring to help intervene into some of our messes. Mm -hmm. When we get in a mess, we want to run and hide, you know, and right. fix it ourselves first. But I think that we're learning first place to go is what's going on here. Why am I feeling this way? Or why am I so angry? Or why did I say that? Or, you know, and that, yeah. can, that can bear a lot of those, fruit. Those don't sound like prayers, but those are exactly the mm -hmm. kind of prayer life. What is this? What's going on? Right. What are you? What are you up to here? Mm -hmm. what, what? What's? What is this? I'm feeling. I mean, those kind of questions. You know, we think of prayer in a, in a very different category. Typically, we we yeah. do now. We think of it very differently now. Mm -hmm. Like what what you're saying that there is this asking questions, considering I I don't know what's going on. What What does it look like to live a little slower and be able to come to God with with questions? I mean, I, I don't know about you guys. I think it's tr I, I, I would bet heavy that it's true for you. When my kids come to me and ask for my help, I help them. <laughs> oh, I'm overjoyed. <laughs> I mean, I'm really? thrilled. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. You know, we'll navigate it together. We'll yeah. figure this out. We'll uh, I'll be with you. I, I mean, that's my answer. That's my posture. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about the radical idea of what if that was God's the father's posture to us too. 
Yeah. yeah, it ties right into the scripture you, you shared, Hebrews 12. The the little, the part that stuck out to me as you read that, Michael, was the the child he embraces, he also corrects. You know, no one wants to be corrected by, by someone standing over them, you know, mm-hmm. with something in his hand, going to whack him across the knuckles yeah, when the he harsh. makes a mistake. Mm-hmm. And as you get some mileage behind you in life, whatever mileage that might be, everybody's a little bit different. You understand that you can't have too much embrace and it can't all be, you know, love all the time Mm -hmm. in that sense. But the embrace combined with the correction lovingly shared is the most loving thing a parent can do. Yeah. So it's that, it's that embrace. I'm going to hold you. I know that hurt. I know that was terrible. I know it's a hard thing you're going through. Now we can talk about how it can go differently next time. Right. And, and the consequence, I know that you can't have the iPad for the weekend because that's the consequence. That's the rule we made. Sure. And I know that frustrates you. And I know it's really hard. And mm-hmm. I'm going to be with you all weekend. And Monday morning, you'll earn it back. But that's a real consequence. Mm-hmm. And it's real life. Yeah. And gravity is not something we can change. And mm-hmm. our rules, because you're crying and you feel bad and it's hard and you didn't like it, I know. That's the lesson. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to leave you. I love you. You can't make me not love you. But by me administering that consequence, that is loving. Mm-hmm. And that's what we were talking about earlier off, you know, off mm-hmm. the mics about how sometimes love, 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 we lose the other side of love, which is holding you responsible for your responsibilities, right. you know, mm-hmm. as part of the relationship and the rules we've set up. Rules aren't there to restrict you and confine you. They're there to protect and keep you safe. Right. Yeah, there's it's freedom. not don't do this because I don't want you. Don't yeah. do this because it might hurt you. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Children that are not disciplined. If you ask an adult who, who as a child, had no discipline whatsoever, was kind of given free reign of the household, do whatever they want to do, they feel the most unloved. Mm-hmm. Because their parents, in their eyes, did not care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's more to talk about for oh, sure, yeah. man. And uh, <laughs> and we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up and then jump in. I'll tell you where we're going so the listeners can stay with us if they want to in in the next session, session four. But what is this? You mentioned Proverbs earlier. You know Proverbs twenty two six. Train up a child in the way they should go, and when they are older, they will not depart from it. So we're gonna unpack that in in the next session. So, man, good good to be talking about important things with you, my friends and brothers. And uh, yeah, we hope our listeners know that they can catch all kinds of Zoe information and, and, and direction and encouragement at, at our website. We'll look forward to catching up with them in the next session on Being Fathered. We hope you have enjoyed this episode of Exploring More. The landing page for this podcast is zoe.org forward slash podcast. That's Z-O-W-E-H dot org forward slash podcast, where you can find the show notes and various platforms to which we broadcast. You can also find us and the life of more by visiting Zoe on Uversion Bible app, Right Now Media, our Facebook page, and Zoe on Instagram and Twitter. Remember, with God there is always more, and you were made for more. More.